Hello everyone, this is Powell Pond Draw Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about flash flooding, dry lightning, wildfires, and a cold front that's gonna reach all the way near the coast. So if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Let's take a look at the overall uh, National Weather Service flash flood guidance over one hour. And so this means something different depending on where you live. This is all based on average, a, uh, average rainfall for your area, uh, terrain, your soil, and as well as your drainage uh, capability. And so down here to the south, you can see the graph here on the right hand side. They're, this is a more or less tropical type environment. They're used to getting some of these heavier downpours. So they're able to get sustained, you know, three to four inch uh, rainfall per hour without causing too much too much issues and you can just definitely see as we go up through sporadic areas of the of the country down here in the uh, out here in Arizona where they are going to be impacted from that monsoon you can definitely see they're only able to get a half inch possibly up to an inch over an hour time span because before they start having some serious flooding issues and that's what they're experiencing with the monsoon so you can definitely see these areas if they do get the rain they can cause flash flooding in a big way fairly quick and out here in the northeast as well they've had a lot of flash flooding as of late because a lot of these areas uh it doesn't drain as properly you can only sustain you know a half inch to an inch so that's why they've had so you know numerous issues up here in the northeast as well as the monsoon as of late and i just think these two issues uh, more or less continue in in the week ahead so as we take a look at the overall lightning for the last uh, two days that's been abundance as well i mean i was reading an article yesterday in phoenix they're already topping their lightning uh strikes for the entire monsoon season already so there's been a, just a numerous amounts of light and a lot of uh, electricity and, you know, in the atmosphere as these, 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 these storms kind of bubble up in the heat of the afternoon. It's been popping sporadic lightning and a lot of it at times, and it's causing these wildfires to happen up here in the, in the Pacific Northwest. And obviously, it's very dangerous when uh, lightning strikes. So they always tell you to, hey, you know, when the thunder roars, uh, get indoors. And they mean that in a big way because it can do some serious damage. And it doesn't have to hit. It just get what they call anvil lightning. It can travel through the, uh, through the ground and affect you in a big way as well. So it definitely can be pretty dangerous. Out here in the, the Pacific Northwest, they've been dealing with these wildfires. And this is the overall uh, smoke map currently as of Sunday, uh, July the 18th. You can definitely see there's a there's a big fire happening right now uh just uh, east of medford oregon at uh, uh, the bootleg area uh, there's been numerous fires there's actually nine of them uh currently and there's 1700 firefighters fighting this fire so they're putting their life as lives on the line unfortunately this particular fire is the biggest one it's already destroyed 227,000 acres and they unfortunately only have it seven percent contained so there that is a serious situation out here where it's been dangerously dry and you can definitely see the smoke as it lifts through the uh the jet stream that's pulling down off the northwest flow and a lot of these areas in the central u.s will actually see some of that smoke as we go through uh through the week as the uh, the wildfires will continue uh, to be an issue so let's take a look at the overall surface map of what's really happening as far as the big picture it's been really dry out here in the uh, in the atlantic there's been a lot of saharan dust uh there's the active uh, monsoon that's still coming off of uh, africa but you got a lot of sinking air over the atlantic at the at the moment but we also find some activity down here by panama and costa rica so we could be uh seeing some a lot of the flare up uh over the next uh, several days will bring a lot of heavier rains to that region we see uh, Guillermo down here that developed yesterday. That will continue moving off to the west northwest. And this little tiny feature here that doesn't seem to want to go away that is Hurricane Felicia. Man, it's a Cat 4. It's packing winds of 145 miles an hour. It doesn't look like much when you zoom out, but when you zoom in, there's a definite symmetrical eye to it. It's a pretty storm to look at, you know, because it's out in the middle of the open waters. 
uh, fortunately, that's actually going to be dissipating and moving off and looks like it's going to be traveling south of uh, Hawaii. So there's going to be no impact uh, from this system. But what's going to happen with these systems, you can definitely see it's pulling with a stream conveyor belt of moisture to aggravate the monsoon issues uh, for the foreseeable future. And this little system down here by Panama, that will continue moving off and that will just add in, add in to that moisture stream for the more, uh, monsoon as we go deeper uh, into the week. But yeah, there's this boundary here closer into the U.S. That's our little uh, you know cold front that we've been watching over the last uh, several days. It's actually bringing some you know rain showers uh, in and along the, uh, the Ohio Valley. That will continue moving off uh, further off to the south as we get into early next week. And so here's the setup for today. There's that cold front that we mentioned uh, to the south of it. That's where you're going to be seeing some of the heavier rains. And the two problem, two areas that uh, doesn't have, you know, <laughs> you know, are a little bit more susceptible for uh, flash flooding are going to be getting some of the heavier rains today uh into the northeast parts of uh new upstate new york getting into boston area there's also that little highlighted feature up here into uh places like tucson south of uh, south arizona into new mexico where they'd be you know getting some of those heavier rains uh today and then down to the south there's also another area down here by arkansas and northern louisiana uh, could be picking up some heavier rains and they're seeing some rains this morning in and around the dallas fort worth area with a kind of little short wave that's coming through but yeah a good issue is going to be the fires i mean here's the here's the fire uh threat for today we see that big big uh, fire out here uh just towards uh medford area uh, but yeah, there's this other area of concern too, where it's been really dry from Fresno all the way to uh, Great Falls. So yeah, this whole area is definitely more prone to uh, uh, fires, starting with you know anything that could strike it, you know, lightning, people, matches, burning, you know, uh, fires or anything like that. So yeah, this definitely this area is a little bit more susceptible to. Uh, fires as we go throughout the afternoon as we go through tomorrow that that sh it shifts just to actually a little bit towards uh, the Montana area where they do find themselves under a critical fire danger uh, coming up on the day on Monday down here in the uh, Billings as well as uh, uh, Great Falls as that ridge will continue to lift up in that region so it only deepens further drying out that atmosphere lowering lowering the humidity values and yes, increasing that fire threat uh, as we go through the day. But as we go through Monday, there's the setup on the 500 millibar. What's going to happen is here's that ridge that's going to be that's what was more or less predominant over this area is going to continue to lift a little bit further off to the north. That's going to allow the jet stream to dip once again, bringing that cold front, and that will allow that cold front with that northwest flow to continue to press. Uh, southward so all this troughing area down here will be pretty much below average temperatures you know out here to the west we'll have above average temperatures, and of course underneath that ridge of high pressure uh, that's where we'll find ourselves with the hottest temperatures and the, all unfortunately the driest temperatures and that's where we'll find ourselves with uh, the highest uh, you know f fire threat as well so as as the cold front will continue to press uh, southward there's the rain prospects as we get into monday i do expect a pretty good pretty good rain uh, pretty good rains in, in and around the dallas Fort Worth area this will continue pressing southward as the cold front will continue pressing through reaching places in maybe waco east texas uh, northern louisiana there's that boundary out ahead of it so if you're in the south of that cold front that's where you're more or less in the unstable air uh, coming up on the day on a Monday. As we transition into Tuesday, here's the setup. That trough just digs a little bit further off to the south. Yeah, I mean, it's very rare to see some blues setting up all the way down to the deep south, and that's indicative of that cold front that will continue uh, to press southward. What's interesting off here in the Pacific Northwest, we do find ourselves with a troughing feature that will continue to press uh, inwards and as it does it brings the much cooler conditions especially off into the coast and that forces that ridge a little bit further off into the interior regions getting closer into montana and getting closer into the dakotas areas with those high the highest temperatures uh, or the highest anomalies under that area 
But what that does is, like I mentioned, here's the lightning index as we go into Tuesday. So as we transition to Tuesday, here's the active monsoon flow. I mean, you can definitely see as we heat up in the afternoon, we've got a lot of lightning out here into uh, the Four Corners regions out here where this monsoon is really prevalent. And as we lift northward with this flow, this conveyor belt, this stream of moisture, we start to see the lightning start to creep into the areas that are seeing the wildfires. And what's happening within this area, because this troughing will dig in, there is going to be a little bit of precipitation that's able to going to be able to fall in this atmosphere under the mid levels but unfortunately it's not going to be reaching the surface so you have in that situation what they call dry lightning where you could see uh you know see the light you know see the lightning hear the thunder and but as the precipitation falls it's just so hot and so dry it more or less evaporates before it hits the ground but those lightning strikes were still there and that's why they have that little bit higher, you know, fire threat, because that can cause a spark and that could cause a fire in itself and just adding insult to injury for that area. So and unfortunately, it's just a bad setup uh, for that for that area. But yes, it's a kind of a little bit of a more rare phenomenon. It does happen in more or less drier regions. But yeah, they have what they call dry lightning uh, possibly setting up. Uh, coming up on uh, the day on Tuesday with that some of that uh, precipitation trying to sneak in on on you know from from the west here that's going to be sneaking into this area and then you know falling in the mid le mid levels but it just unfortunately evaporating before it hits the ground so and there's the setup on the rain the radar so you can definitely see there's that cold front down to the south that'll be pressing further south so all these areas into uh, more or less Dallas, southward Austin, getting into San Antonio. That'll creep into the Houston area. That'll set up the boundary into uh, into the southeast regions, into Florida. And but you see the active monsoon flow trying to creep in some of that precipitation. You can definitely see it on radar. But a lot of this won't won't be hitting the ground. And a lot of the areas in uh, uh, you know portions of Washington and Oregon and Idaho and and uh, Montana here with just that very dry conditions out in that region. And we continue to remain active up here into parts of the Mid-Atlantic as well as the Northeast with this continued uh, unsettled weather. There's the cold front as we reach into uh, Wednesday. It continues to press southward. Yes, it's very rare for you know middle to late July to see a cold front extending all the way down into central Louisiana, uh, central Texas, trying to get into portions of Houston, uh, of all places, with a cold front. <laughs> so all these areas will pick up a lot of rain coming up on the day on Wednesday with that front continue to press southward. But you can see the transition. It's not going to reach too much further south because it's already showing signs that it's changing over to more or less a warm front, and that'll be backing up. But it won't be backing up that much. So as it backs up, uh, that'll just add, you know, add the uh, rain conditions with those overrunning effect into a lot of the same areas along the along the southern coast. It remains active for the uh, for the Four Corners regions where that uh, that monsoon will continue. Uh, to remain alive as the ridge will will try to lift further off to the north and then as we transition into midweek it'll start sinking into the dakotas and start creeping into portions of nebraska and start drying them out and heating them up as well and so as we sink into the day on friday that ridge just more or less comes starts here swings all the way through and then kind of sneaks down as we go to the day on friday then it's going to be setting up over portions of the central plains into Nebraska, into Kansas, and they could be seeing some uh, starting to the seeing the, the beginnings of the effect of some of that triple digit heat as the setup of down to the south will continue to remain active uh, with that with that boundary as as well. So there's your high temperatures as we transition into uh, Saturday the 24th. Uh, you can see, yeah, definitely the ridge isn't as prevalent off to the west. It sneaks up to the north, but then kind of dives down and it looks some indications. It's going to try to rebuild as we go into, you know, the, the you know further after off to the 25th. So we have to watch this area into uh, the central plains and see if they're able to heat up. And that'd be 
uh, you know, some of the some of the hot, probably the hottest temperature, some of the hottest temperatures they've seen uh, all year uh, would be coming up. You know, of course, that's another week away. But there, there are some signs that the ridge is going to be trying to sneak down into this, at least the central uh, part of the U.S. and maybe start to creep into portions of Oklahoma as we go into late uh, next weekend. There's your rain prospects over the next week. So there's your active monsoon flow with those continue uh, disturbances that, that are coming off into the Pacific that will keep the monsoon alive uh, over portions of uh, Arizona, New Mexico, even into Utah, as well as portions of uh, Colorado as well. And you can definitely see it starts to creep in into portions of Wyoming, but where that ridge is, that just dries out the atmosphere. And you can see it kind of depicts where that ridge is going to be. You see, it's just kind of a circle effect as it comes through the central plains and down to the south where they have that cold front and where that boundary is for most of the week, we've got some good rains into uh, ports of Dallas and especially as we go into central central Texas, east Texas, southeast Texas, into the into uh, uh, the Carolinas as well as the continued flow off the Ohio Valley and the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast will continue uh, to remain active and unsettled for them. So, uh, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video and definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.